I've owned my little yellow Jeep for four years now, and it's gone from being my daily commuter to a vehicle that we've had a lot of fun and adventures in. And over the years, I've discovered some things that I really love about my Jeep and a couple of things that, well, I've got a few critiques. We've also made some minor modifications over the years, and we have some plans in store for future modifications as well. We've got a lot to share with you in this episode, so stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Regina. And I'm Brad. Four years ago, I decided that I needed to downsize for my eight passenger SUV. My kids were grown, I didn't need a big behemoth of a vehicle, and I decided I wanted something small and fun, and I settled on this beautiful yellow two-door Jeep. But before we got to that point, I was very specific in what I wanted in my Jeep. It had to be yellow, that was non-negotiable. It had to be two doors and it had to be all yellow, fenders, roof, everything. And Brad said, that's a unicorn. We're never gonna find it. We did find it. <laughs> However, one of the challenges was in my head, it was like, this is the first generation of this new model Jeep. So this is a 2018 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon JL. And they always say, don't buy the first year model. Let's work out those bugs a little bit. However, it's worked out pretty good. Oh yeah, I love, love, love my little two-door Jeep. Yeah, there's a lot of things uh, about this Jeep that have really held up well over the last four years. Yep, and, and there's some pros and some cons to owning it, and we'll kind of take you through it and walk you through what those pros and cons are, and I'll tell you why I absolutely love this Jeep. Yep, so Regina's gonna share with you kind of the emotional passion about <laughs> the Jeep, and I'm gonna take you front to rear. We're gonna talk about the specs and look at all the things that have held up, so let's dive in. Alrighty. Why a yellow two-door Jeep? Why was I so specific in what I wanted? Well, many years ago, before kids, before Brad, I had a little yellow Volkswagen. It was a 1973 Super Beetle, and I absolutely adored my bug. It was just so much fun to drive. I loved the little sound that that little engine made. It just made me happy to drive it. And so when I finally realized that, you know, I'm not, my kids are grown, I don't need a great big vehicle. You know, I've owned mom cars for the past 18 years. I decided to get something for me for fun that kind of reminded me of all the great times I used to have when, you know, I was young and, you know, could go anywhere and do anything. So that's kind of what this Jeep means to me. It's, it's about fun and freedom to just get out there and, and have a blast. When we first bought the Jeep, it was my daily commuter. I was working full time and I drove about 30 miles one way every day to get from my house, from my door to where I worked. So even though it was my commuter car, we'd take my Jeep out on the weekends. I'd hang out with Brad and the boys and you know, I'd learn what the Jeep was capable of. I learned how to drive it off-road. And even though I actually grew up in an off-road family, I was a kid, so I was really just a passenger in it. But you know, learning to drive it and take it off-road built my confidence in, in the Jeep's capabilities as well as my own driving abilities. And you know, over the years, we've had so much fun going out as a family, kind of out in the mountains, out in the desert, away from technology, away from video games, where it's just us spending time together. And it's been a blast. Fast forward four years, I've built my confidence in both my Jeep's capabilities and my driving abilities, and I'm ready to tackle more technical trails and challenges. Several months ago, we did fins and things in Moab, and I don't know if you've ever done fins and things, and there's parts of the trail where you're just going straight up and you don't see anything but sky. And for me, that was a little terrifying because I've got a thing with heights, but after I did the trail, the accomplishment was amazing. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready for more. I wanna do more technical trails. So um, in some of the trails I wanna do, my Jeep's gonna require some modifications, but more on that later. So I've had a lot of questions and comments over the years about my Jeep's name, and it hasn't had a name. It's kind of like when you get a new kitten or a puppy and you've got to find a name that fits and nothing came to me. It was like, the Jeep just didn't have a name. But again, over the years, as I've driven it more, it's kind of developed its own personality and I kind of feel like I have a relationship with my Jeep. And a name finally came to me recently and her name is now Flora. 
The reason I picked that name is Flora is the Roman goddess of spring and wildflowers, and that's just a happy thing, which goes with my Jeep, I think. It's just a little ray of sunshine behind me, and so that fit. But the main reason is Hospital Corpsman First Class, Ruth Flora, was one of the first six females who were sworn into the Navy enlisted. Um, she was also the very first female hospital corpsman ever, and given our history, as Corman, Brad and I, and now our son Jordan, um, as a female in the Navy, that name just seemed to resonate with me. Now that I've shared with you why I love my Jeep and what makes it special to me personally, Brad's gonna take you through some of the more drier things like modifications we've made and how it's held up over the past four years. This is not the boring stuff. This is the stuff that if somebody is buying a used Jeep Wrangler JL, they want to know how well is it holding up. And I will say after four years and 63,000 miles and Regina doing a ton of commuting, this thing sitting out in the San Diego sun and doing some off-roading, this little two-door has held up much better than I expected. I really like this little Jeep. In fact, sometimes I'm jealous that I don't own a two-door myself. There are a lot of things that have really gone well with this Jeep, but there's a few things that uh, I got some criticisms for, and there's a bunch of modifications that we've done and some things we're gonna tweak. So I wanna talk through that a little bit. Let's start with the paint. You know, you cannot miss this thing sitting in a parking lot. And over the last four years, the paint has held up really, really well. But I do think it's probably time to do a little clay bar and a little bit of buffing just to kind of bring it back a little bit, just to keep it good and fresh. But it does look really well. There is a lot of plastic on the Jeep, and surprisingly, it's all held up really well. There's a little bit of fading on the cowl, but most of it is looking perfect, and there's not been any issues. It's not cracking. Pretty impressed with the exterior of the Jeep, except for one thing. That is the gas cap. And I have had two failed attempts at trying to repair the gas cap. The little latches on the back that hold it in place have broken off and I've tried to be creative in uh, trying to fix that, but I think it's probably time that I'm just going to have to replace it all together. Other than that, everything on the outside is holding up really well. Let's talk about the front and why we've never used that winch. I know I'm biased, but the front of the Jeep is just the best looking front end out there in the entire market. I love the look of the Jeep. Now, the front here, it's interesting. You know, she has done a lot of commuting and there is not a single chip in the paint in the front of this, which is very surprising. Now, we've replaced the window more than once, but the front end, I've never had to do any touch-up paint. It looks great. One thing I think uh, if we could go back in time and had we had ordered this Jeep, special ordered it, we would have done it with the LED lights. So I know these lights are great if you're in the snow or in cold conditions, but for us here in San Diego, it's not a big deal. And so having the LED lights would be much nicer. These are a little underpowered. We did put on the KC Daylighters with a little smiley face and these work well, but because Regina wants to start doing more off-roading, that may mean we might find ourselves out in the dark a little more often. So I think maybe adding some more lights, even some rock lights, some of those things might be coming here in the future. Now, let's talk about the bumper. This is still the stock bumper, and I am a fan of it. I like that you can just put a winch right in the stock bumper using a mounting plate, and I think we put the Mopar mounting plate in there. And I went budget when I bought the winch. We went with the Smittybilt X20 winch, and I did that because I was like, well, she's probably not ever going to need to use this winch. And well, fast forward four years, and that ended up being a true statement. This winch has never been used. And so I think it was the right decision. This is still a good winch. I've used this winch. I had, used to have this on my JK and it works really well. Uh, and I think going forward, it might get some use. Regina wants to do some tougher, more technical trails. So we need to make sure that this winch is in good working order. And as I'm sitting here thinking about it, it's been about two years since I've unspooled this and let the uh, synthetic line breathe and clean it. So I probably need to do that. I've been neglecting that a little bit. But the good news is, is she's a two-door, and let's be honest, a two-door Jeep is lighter and more nibble on the trail, so she may never use this winch, but we're gonna make sure it's in good working order for her. All right, let's pop the hood, and let's talk about how this engine has fared over the last four years. So under this hood is the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine, and over the last four years, and now 63,000 miles, 
This little engine has held up really well. We have not had any issues at all. Knock on, well, I got some plastic, but we have not had any challenges with this engine at all. And the great thing about this engine is it makes this little two-door get up and go. If you go drive a four-door Jeep and then you hop with a 3.6 liter engine and then hop in this one, it's just more spirited to drive. And so this under the hood is perfect for this little Jeep. Now, there is one thing that we did have a challenge with and that was the steering. When we first got it, the steering was really, it just seemed very sloppy. I mean, look, it's a Jeep, so we know the steering isn't gonna be like Ferrari tight in the beginning. But Jeep originally put an aluminum steering box in here and I think they were doing it to try to save weight. They did a recall on that. We got it replaced for free and that made a huge like night and day difference in the steering. And so that's the only issue that we've had but there have never been any challenges with this motor. Now again, it's only 63,000 miles but it's holding up really well. We did install uh, under here, everything's stock, but we have an ARB air compressor that uh, has a grim off-road mount on there, and that is a great place to mount an air compressor. So at the end of the day on the trail, quickly air up our tires and get going, and it's just out of the way in a nice convenient spot. So we really have enjoyed having that there. But other than that, we haven't done any upgrades and I don't intend to. We wanna keep this stock and reliable so it's easy to go get it serviced. It's been a great engine and it's still got a lot of life left in it. Now, wheels, tires, and suspension, I thought would never get upgraded on this Jeep, but Regina, after off-roading it, decided, you know what, I want a little more clearance, I want some beefier tires, and so we started making those modifications a few years ago, and so we did put a two and a half inch lift kit on there. It's actually an Icon lift, however, when we installed it, the springs were pretty stiff and it actually sat up about three and a quarter inches over what we thought it was gonna do. And so ended up replacing the coils with some TerraFlex 2.5 inch coils. And so this ride is a little bit better and it sits down a little bit lower, like a two and a half inch lift kit should, but all the control arms and the shocks with the remote reservoirs that are adjustable are all icon. The whole system is really working really well. This thing drives down the road very nice and off-road, it's perfect. We did put on some 35 inch tires and these are actually the takeoffs from my 392. I really like the look of these Mopar wheels and I'm a little jealous. I almost wish I hadn't put them on the Jeep, but they do look really good on this Jeep. And these are a uh, beadlock capable wheels. I don't think we're gonna put 37s on here. She's talked about it from time to time, but we're pretty happy with the 35s. But I do think because this is not her commuter anymore, this is gonna be more of you know running around town, but then we're gonna go hit the trail I think that we might actually upgrade these to some mud terrains. Behind here, we have the Dana 44 axles that come with the Rubicon, and I've done nothing to those. However, it's probably time to start thinking about that and just to give us a little bit of insurance. So things like diff covers, chromoly axles, that kind of stuff uh, we may do in the future. It still has the stock 410 gearing, which I think for 35s, it's okay. It could be a little bit better, but it's just not cost effective to go up a little more. I'm sure Regina would like to have that little bit of extra acceleration, uh, but we're just not gonna do that now. Maybe if we go to 37s, then that will make a little bit more sense. Uh, the, we did upgrade uh, the tie rod and draggling with, with some steer smarts. One thing I need to start thinking about is maybe some extra skid plates underneath. It's still all stock under there. And so if we're gonna go get after it a little bit more on some trails, I wanna make sure she's got some nice protection underneath. That's pretty important. The one thing that we did uh, a while back, and this was important, and she nagged me hard about this, was if we were gonna lift it and put bigger tires on it, that she wanted to put a step in there. So we went with the Rock Slide Engineering steps. And after putting that on, uh, and her using it for a little while, she actually ended up turning it off. It's a great looking setup and it works really well. The problem is on the two door because it's so narrow, when the hinges come down that hold the step on there, it's actually right, that one hinge is kind of where she steps. And so she doesn't actually like that. So I, I don't know if we'll replace it with another one. I still have the stock ones. Maybe we'll put the stock ones back on there or we'll just leave it as is. Uh, but it's funny that uh, she insisted that she had to have that. And then uh, a couple of weeks after having it, she's like, can we turn this off? Can we not use this? And so, Rockslide Engineering makes a great product. Uh, it's just, it doesn't work for the way she gets in and out of the Jeep. Just where that one bar is just doesn't sit right. 
The back of the Jeep is bone stock, but I think there's probably two things that we're gonna consider doing. One is a tire carrier. I think just having a little more strength back there as we begin to do more harder trails, that will be important. And the other thing is it's the stock bumper. And if you know anything about Jeeps and the stock rear bumper, if you take a hit on a rock or something, that bumper has a tendency to kind of bump up and hit the body of the vehicle and it actually can cause dents. And so I think we may upgrade the rear bumper. We'll do something probably aluminum. But otherwise everything back there is stock except for the tailgate table, which she uses quite a bit. And she's talking about let's remove the rear seat because nobody sits in the back of her Jeep ever. And so we might actually finally take that out. One, that'll give her a little more space. And two, it'll save a little bit of weight. Now on the interior, this is where I've been really impressed. The interior plastic, the leathers, all of it has been holding up really well. It all is in great condition. We keep this thing pretty clean, but we don't do anything crazy. I'm not using any kind of conditioners or any kind of special products. Just soap and water, wiping this thing down often. It's held up really well inside. The leather seats, we love leather seats. They're easy to clean. It's not doing that thing that leather seats tend to do is like crinkle up where you're sitting on them and sliding on them. They're actually holding up really well. Although I did just notice yesterday when I was washing this that she does have a slight little tear in here. And so well, that, that'll be easy enough to fix, but that may have just been like, you know, some keys or something that just caught that just right. Interior, it's mostly stock. I did install a GMRS radio in there. And initially she liked where I mounted the radio, except when you try to pull the seat all the way forward, it does hit the radio and limit forward travel of the seat. And so I don't know if it's a big deal. If she may want me to relocate that, but I think because nobody's gonna be climbing in and out of the back, it's maybe not necessary. And she does have the 67 designs mount uh, in there. And she likes her foam mount all the way on the opposite side. So when I drive this, I'm just not used to it, uh, but she prefers it over there because she likes to have her vents nice and clear. It works for her. That's the great thing about Jeep and those kind of modifications is you can customize them the way you want it. And that's where she likes her phone. So that's all good to go. Okay. So all in all, this Jeep over four years and 63,000 miles, it's held up really well. Now let's hear some of Regina's pros and her cons about owning this. This really has been a great vehicle for me for the past four years. I absolutely love driving it and I really don't have very many complaints. If this is something that you're considering getting for yourself, I'll share with you some of the pros and cons from my perspective that you might wanna take into account. And we'll start with the pros. Number one, it's just fun to drive. I absolutely love driving it, whether it's on the road, on the freeway, on the trail, it's just, it makes me happy. Two, I love how it looks. The classic Jeep lines, the shape of it, the color of it, it's yellow and it's happy and it, I just enjoy looking at it. Three, it's nimble. It can go pretty much anywhere I want it to go. If we're on a trail and we have to turn around, it's very easy for me to just flip it around. Sometimes I can even do a U-turn on a trail or maybe a two-point turn as I'm watching everybody else struggle with their four doors or even longer wheelbases to, to get flipped around. When we're on the freeway, because it's so small, it's very easy for me to change lanes, even in heavy traffic. And when I'm in a parking lot, I can just zip in and out of spaces no matter how small they are. Four, this is a very capable vehicle, which is one of the reasons I wanted a Jeep. I wanted to join Brad on his adventures, but I wanted to drive myself. I love the fact that it can do just about anything I want it to do. It can go over rocks, it can go through rivers, it can go up mountains. It just goes anywhere, and that's one of the things I love about this vehicle. Those are the pros, now let's talk about the cons. This is not the most fuel efficient vehicle in the world. And if you're worried about your MPG, this probably isn't for you, but it does get way better gas mileage on the road than my old Nissan Armada did. In my Jeep, I get about 16 to 17 miles to the gallon, which isn't bad, comparatively speaking. Two, my windshield is a rock magnet. There's something about the way Jeep windshields are made that are not very aerodynamic. It has to do with their history and the fact that they're designed to fold down, something I've never done, but the shape of them causes rocks to just be attracted to them. I'm on my third windshield and I'm sure number four is not too far off in my future. Three, the back seat, when you flip it up, 
to make more space in the cargo area, it doesn't latch into place automatically. You have to go around to either the passenger or the driver's side and there's a little strap that hooks into this little dilemma-bob on the frame and that's how you keep it from flopping down. When you have stuff in the back of it, it's just fine. But when you take stuff out of the back and you forget to flip the seat down, you're driving down the road and it flops back and forth. I wish it would just lock into place on its own. Four. The seat back adjuster is not easy to use, especially if you're in the car driving, because you have to finagle your hand in between the door and the side of the street to reach this little strap, which I often confuse with the seat belt, by the way, in order to move the seat forwards and backwards. And if you wear something like this on your wrist, it's really hard to do. The best way to adjust it is to have the door open, which is not always convenient, especially when you're driving. Those are my cons, and for the most part, they're things I can totally live with. Overall, I would say the pros far outweigh the cons. Okay, so if we could rewind in time and go back four years ago when okay. you insisted on having this Jeep. I insisted. You insisted. <laughs> you had the choice to maybe do it over again. You could maybe get a Corvette. No, not for me. Not um, a Corvette girl. A Land Rover Defender. Maybe. Volkswagen Bug. Now we're talking. Over this. No. no, was it still <laughs> I, the right choice? I loved my bug, but I absolutely love, love, love my Jeep. Uh, I, I'm excited because uh, one, you're excited about it, and two, <laughs> you're, you want to do some more stuff with it. I so do. We can do some upgrades. Yeah, we can make some modifications because I want to take this to some of those trails in Northern California that, you know, you've been on, like, you know, that big one that everyone talks about starts with an R. Yeah. Yeah. Rubicon, huh? Yeah, I would love to. Ooh, we got to work up to that. Okay. But I think that'll be okay. exciting. One day. One day. Well, there you have it, guys. Four years, the Jeep is holding up and she still loves it, which is all that really matters. The honeymoon is not over. It's not over. <laughs> and we're going to do some more content with this, some more projects in the garage. I'm going to kind of revive the two door a little bit on the channel. I think it'll be Please. kind of fun. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I want to drive it more. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.